Welcome everyone to my first tutorial with the uh, Atlas Grid Editor, all right, aka Map Editor, aka Server Grid Editor. Um, just wanted to uh, go and break these out. This is part one in the series. This is getting started with the Map Editor. So first we want to go and navigate to the actual GitHub page and download a fresh copy of the editor. It gets updated all the time, so you want to make sure you check it regularly and uh, ensure that you have the latest copy. So we're just going to hit clone download, download zip, and then select the, select the location where you want it. I also highly recommend getting yourself a copy of Notepad++. And if you don't mind spending a couple of bucks for something that's really going to make it easier to you know, see the tables themselves, JSON buddy. So here we've gone and downloaded the copy and extracted it. What we're going to do is we're going to start out by opening it up, and you're going to see that it generated a couple new folders. So going through everything, we're going to see data, we're going to see foregrounds, island images, projects. Now projects is one that you want to kind of pay attention to because they were kind enough to give us some actual templates, and uh, over time as the editor has been updated, they've actually included some more. Got resources, got source files, and we've got the water tile. All right, so we want to start with loading a project, and we can just explore for the moment. Okay, we'll open up the official one, which is Server Grid. All right, let's maximize this. So going over the interface, we have several different things. So starting the top left with project, we can create a project. Okay, we can open a project, we can edit the currently open project, go into edit, we can see special spawner templates, we can see a list of all discovery zones across the entire map. We see all the spawn regions across the entire map, their names and their locations. We can see the server templates, also known as biomes. Then we can go and we can edit the locks. If we lock everything, that means that we can't interact or drag or modify anything on here. And if we unlock just certain things, then only certain things will be changed. And we have export. Now, if you have an older version of the editor, you won't have local export at all. Uh, you'll have several different options for your exports. Okay. You can export everything, your JSONs and your map images and you can sell images, or you can just export the map image or your cell images. And then you can also generate a slippy map. Slippy maps are used for web pages similar to Google Earth, interactive web maps. This does not work. <laughs> Don't click it or your kit will crash. And then you have help. Help is very useful gives you all of the different types of shortcuts. So if we hold left click, or if we hold uh, left click, we can move an island. If we right click, we can rotate an island. Um, that also goes for anything else. So just like these black dots are the ship paths, we can hold left click to move them around. And if we zoom in, we can hold right click to rotate them or make the curve uh, greater or less. And then we can scroll with our mouse wheel. If your mouse wheel doesn't scroll, you come down here to the bottom left, okay, where set ratio is, and usually start at about 3,000 and hit set ratio. And that'll bring you right in so you can start seeing things. And you just change that. The higher the number, you go to 4,000. See, we go zoom out a little bit, all right? So going back into the help menu, we look, delete button removes an island. It also will remove a ship grid path. And then we also have control click on a grid, and that edits the actual instance, shard, 
a server, a segment, whatever you want to call it. That allows you to edit the individual information. So the IP address, the name, whether it's a home server or not, uh, the port, and the uh, game port. So the port is actually the query port. So next we want to also look at control and click. And when it says control and click, it's control and left click. All right, control and left click on island. That allows you to edit the actual island's information. All right, and you can actually go and hold down your middle mouse button. Like you hold your shift, your uh, you hold your scroll wheel down, and that's how you actually move around the map when you're zoomed in. Okay, so next we have shift and drag. That actually creates a discovery zone. That is these little gold boxes. Then next we have L opens the locks form, right? That was that edit edit locks that we saw in the menu. Right? Next we have P. P generates a three section, right? That's three of these dots, okay? It'll generate a three dot section of a ship grid. Alright. Now it's not listed here, and I hope it will be in the future, but if you hit the plus key on your keypad, all right, on standard keypads, it's going to be the middle right side of your keypad. Um, that will add additional nodes to your ship paths, all right? And then to delete a path, all right, delete one of the nodes, you just hover your mouse over it, and you hit the delete key. All right. Now to delete an entire ship path, you hit Shift Delete while you're hovering over it. Right. And then if you Control and Left Click on a path node, let's see ship paths, you can actually change uh, what NPC spawn ship it is, ghost ships, craft, um, or one of the NPC traders. All right. So down here at the bottom, we have Show Foreground. You can pick a custom foreground. We have show island names. So if we click show island names, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. All right. It gives you the name of the island. And if you look here on the right, these are the sizes of the islands, the names of the islands, a thumbnail of what the island looks like, and then how many type or how many of that island type are placed on the map. Okay. Then we have show discovery zones. Discovery zones are these uh, golden colored boxes. Then lines are actually the grid themselves. All right, so if we hit show lines, it gets rid of all of them. All right, and we have export alpha background, and we can show ship paths, and we can disable image exporting, and we can change the image quality of the exported image files. Now we have water type back. Now if you're having an issue with um, the uh, the actual latency, all right, if this is eating up too much uh, power on your machine and it's really laggy, you can actually disable the water tile background, okay, and that gives you much better response, especially when you're zoomed in. Next, we have the Atlas image size. Pick disco zone tile. And the disco zone tile is, you know, these boxes. And then you have pick water tile, which pick water tile last I knew did not work. Uh, we have to manually put in to the uh, JSON file the water tile. And then we have the tile scale. All right, so moving over here to the right, if you hit edit island, it does the same thing as if you were to middle click on an island. All right. Now, any change you make in this menu affects all islands of this exact same type on the entire map. Okay. This includes the sub levels, extra sub levels. Uh, you can do island treasure bottle supply crate overrides. And it tells you where that island is located on the map. All right as well as a few other options. Now you can add islands. Okay. So you can kind of make your own island, all right, from a compilation of the sublevels 
that you see in these other islands, okay, you'd have to make a custom image for it, get the size, make the name, all right, and then you would place it in the actual map. You can also delete islands, okay, by hitting the move selected. I highly recommend you save constantly, probably about th every 30 minutes. And that sums up for part one on how to use the grid editor, getting started with the map editor. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two.